when provisioning and configuring all of your infrastructure in Azure, you're going to need some fine-grained control on how, what, and when things get provisioned. So join me and Frank Boucher when we dive in deep on controlling your deployments using ARM templates next time on the DevOps Lab. Welcome to the DevOps Lab. Today, we have a very special guest, Frank Boucher. We're going to be covering ARM templates, and Frank's going to be showing us how we can control our deployments with ARM templates. So how's it going, Frank? Yeah, very well. How about you? So when you talk about controlling deployments, um, a lot of times when I'm provisioning and configuring a bunch of stuff in Azure, the order that we deploy and configure things starts to matter. Is this what you mean when you talk about controlling deployments? Exactly. This and a little bit extra. We'll we'll get there soon. Okay. Um, so can you explain to me like how you can control deployments and what you can do and what all this looks like? Yeah, no problem. So just kind of to recap, since the beginning, we did only deploy one resources and that I was on purpose to keep it simple. Mm -hmm. But of course, in real life, just like you said, Usually we have multiple resources, so order are very important since if you're deploying uh, a VM, you want the storage to be ready to receive like the disk, right? So order is important. Mm -hmm. uh, so today what I suggest is let's put on the side for just a few minutes the template that we were working and we should start working on a new one and create, let's say, a website with a service plan and you know see how we can enforce some order, creation order in that. OK. Cool? Yep. So I'll, I'll share my screen. OK. So for that, I created a new template empty just called you know temp.json. Perfect. So I will, I'm still in Visual Studio Code, and I'm using the great extension for ARM template. So I have a lot of speed that is added to with that. So just create an empty template, just like we did previously. And now we'll create some resources. So let's say I want to create a website. So to do that, I just need to do ARM and then web for web app. Pick this. And for now, let's not care about the naming and all the best practices we learn. We just focus on the depends on, like the, that property that create that order. So right now, if we look here, that's our resource, right? Here. Mm -hmm. And here I have depends on. And right now, if I'm trying to validate that or deploy that, of course, like the name is awful, but it won't work because my web app is waiting for a new resource, an app service plan to be defined before. And Azure, because it's always trying to paralyze everything to go faster, um, we enforce a specific order using the keyword depends on. So and that's right, what you do. So Sorry. right here, uh, I'm just trying to make sure I understand what's going on. So right here, you're saying before I can provision my web app one, yes, make sure that the app service plan one is already created. And then that resource ID, is that one of the, the, the functions that, that, we, that you showed earlier? Exactly. The resource ID is one of the, uh, the function included in ARM. So it will return the, uh, the resource ID. OK, got it, got it. OK. So now it has to make sure before we can even start provisioning web app, make sure the app service plan is already done. Exactly. And we cool. could stack them. You see here it's an array. So right now I only have one dependency, but mm -hmm. I could add more if I need to or if I want to. OK. So let's fix our bug. We'll add a service plan. So to do that again, it's very simple. With the extension, I just do arm-plan. And right away, let oh, me nice. I have my service plan created. And this one doesn't have any dependency, but now See now it's matching. Of course, in a real scenario, we'll give it a name that matters and stuff like that. Sure. But now if we 
validate that it will it will be working. In fact, let's try that right away, you know, just okay. to make sure. So I have a little script here. Again, just to remember if people missed the episode where I was talking about that, but AZ for Azure CLI, all those things are also possible in PowerShell. Just I didn't need to pick one, right? <laughs> yeah. So I'm doing a group deployment and I will be validating. So I'm not deploying anything, it's just it testing lo it tests locally if the names are correct, if the I'm respecting the schema, if uh, like all those things. I'm specifying the resource group because some resource could be already deployed, already in Azure. So I need to check. So the validation will also do that. The resource group I just created before with the, the command before. Mm -hmm. And then I pass the temp JSON document we just created. And I it's safe, right? Let's control S a few times. Cool. Now if I'm running this, it should take only a few seconds. And I have error null, null, meaning everything is good. Cool. Usually when it's very long, it means everything is good. <laughs> <laughs> when it's short, it's probably because you have an error and they go specific on that error. Got it. So that's cool. So it means, yes, it's not following the best practices, like a, but the name is not. If I'm trying honestly to deploy that, I may find an error where the name is already used and like it's not following the best practices, but now I kind of make sure it will be first the service plan and then the web app. And that's very useful in many different scenario. If you're doing VMs, databases, uh, like you know, you want a, the database before the website, so you have the connection string to put in the settings. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have also child, so for example, in a website, I could have. Um, a sub resource or a child resources um, mm -hmm. that is called, if I'm not mistaken, um, I forgot the, the name, uh, source control. So I've typed source control, and mm -hmm. it's very useful when you want to do a synchronization between, for example, GitHub and Git of your app service in Azure. So the mm -hmm. code is also, you know, pump in your application. Mm -hmm. So you could have a resource like that. And of course, before adding a child, you need a parent to be there. So you could this way add also um, the depends on. So it's very, very, very useful. You will see that in all in all ARM templates, very useful. So what if, for example, in this scenario, if we come back to our, uh, our template that we have, uh, where we deploy uh, or storage, we could want to deploy a website all the time and deploy a storage, but only when, remember, just to recap here, we had an environment variables and we had different settings depending on if you are in dev and prod. What we could do is let's deploy the, web, the service plan and the web app every time in dev, in QA, in prod, in all the, all the environment. But when we are in prod, I would like to have also a storage to save some backups. I don't need backups if I'm in dev. You know, that environment is always destroyed. Mm -hmm. Same for QA. But in prod, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. So we could do that very, very, very simply using one property. So I have already prepared the all the schema, so let me show that. So what I did here is I integrated the temp version. I apply all the naming that we have. So I have an application name now and a plan name. I created variable. So I apply all the good standard that we learn and practice during the past tutorial. I mm -hmm. apply all those. I did create a QA environment also. Okay. So just, you know, so QA could have still like premium uh, storage because mm -hmm. you know we want to be closer to the prod, but we still don't need backup in QA. Mm -hmm. So what I did is, if I'm I'm scrolling slowly, I'm going to the Earth storage. So this is here. Let me zoom. So that's here. That's our storage. Mm -hmm. And here, what I just did, it's very very simple. I just used the property condition. 
And then using all the, equ um, equ uh, what's the, the good word, equity? Comparison, comparison var yeah. uh, functions. Mm -hmm. Comparison functions. This is really hard. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Um, I use equal and I say when the parameter environment is uh -huh. equal to prod, uh -huh. then the condition will be true. So this resources will be deployed. Otherwise, it would just be ignored. So this is like an if statement, right? So if it's prod, then do this chunk of code. Exactly. And it, like you could put that to any resources. So, yep, it is exactly that. Just a simple condition. And I use a very simple condition, in our, but obviously you could use something way more complex. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I think this is a very uh, probable scenario where in prod you want to do something different. Wow, Frank, that was awesome stuff. You just showed us a lot of power. I mean, first you showed us depends on, right? Where one thing can depend on another. So one resource will depend on another. Basically, you're telling me how I can deploy things in a certain order. And that's really, really useful. You also showed the ability to have conditionals. So if some condition is met, then go ahead and deploy this resource. Otherwise, don't do anything at all. So again, so much power that you can have inside of ARM templates. It really is a language, not just JSON. And having these two things, I'm really starting to finally see how I can use ARM templates to do real world type of deployments. Thank you so much, Frank. I absolutely love this. If you all need more information, check out the links below and join us next time on the DevOps Lab.